All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Kudobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the CSA Contaris Lem mod, which is being made by, yet again, forum user HRaban. And this is another of the CSA Contaris series, and since we have so far looked at satellite and probe parts, I figured it was about time for us to get some Kerbal Crude parts today, so let's jump right on into the Vehicle Assembly Building and have a look at a number of different concept design based crew capsules that you can now enjoy. So let's go and, uh, well, first grab a Mark 1 command pod for size comparison sake and then turn on our janitor's closet mod filter, just leaving the Conteres Lem. And I actually should point out, since you're seeing the squad expansion thing here, that uh, this, as well as the other CSA Conteres parts, are all now updated to 1.4.1. So that is what we are in here today. We are now in the latest update of the game, which is always a good thing. So let's go take a look at the first of our new lovely lander capsules here, this one being the C-22 Lander Pod, which is a pretty large container, as you can see here, and it does hold, surprisingly though, only two Kerbals. I would have figured for its size it'd fit a couple of more, but nonetheless, a two Kerbal crew capacity, but it is still capable of being unmanned if you need, which is actually quite useful. And then of course it has a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS 700 electric charge and 180 monopropellant. Now the next of the crew capsules that we have, we're going to look at the Cibola, and I'm not even going to try and pronounce the rest of that because, oh, I will butcher it. And yet another fun little command pod, this one surprisingly holding four Kerbals, which considering the size comparison to this, You'd think not quite so much, but yes, it will hold four Kerbals. Once again, it is unmanned with a data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, 700 electric charge, though this time eight or 100 rather, and 82 liquid fuel, 30 monopropellant, and 222.6 oxidizer. And what's interesting between the two of these, they technically do have internal views, but internal views where you're looking at basically nothing, but the Kerbals inside sit uh, on this particular one, the C-22, one in the front and then one in the back, whereas on uh, this uh, Cibola, it's four Kerbals all laying down flat inside of this capsule. Very, very cramped spacing, but hey, it does in fact fit four, which is pretty interesting. And I do like that they have the placeholder interior for now, as it gives me hope that there will be proper internal views to come, which would be quite nice. Now the next command pod that we have here is fully unmanned, so no crew capacity on this one, and is the DLMS-C, and as you can see, it is a much a larger command pod here with a data transmitter reaction wheel SAS a 500 electric charge and 800 monopropellant and this one well it's good for storage as we can open up a cargo bay to actually put a fair amount of things on the interior of this capsule which is pretty nice to have I do always love having some form of bay that we can open and mess around with as you can see with entrances to it on both sides sides. Very nice. Now the next command pod we have is a very tiny little thing called the candy box. And this again is an unmanned only command pod. And well, its purpose is to actually be a science and ore and surface sample return capsule which I love the idea of these things. We've actually looked at a few other mods in the past that had something similar, and I've always enjoyed them. It's just nice to be able to quickly fly by Kerbal again, and, you know, launch a couple of science pods back into the atmosphere. Now, because it is meant to be a return capsule, it does have a built-in ablator, the data transmitter reaction wheel, SAS ablator, of course, again here, electric charge of 300, and ore capacity being able to hold 20. 20, which I do like. It's a very cool little craft. Now the next thing we have is the CLS-1K, and this is not just a command pod, it's 
basically a whole little ship in one go. And there we are, a beautiful little sci-fi looking lander, which holds one Kerbal, can be commanded though unmanned, and has a built-in data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, a crew report, which is interesting, you probably may have noticed these other crew capsules did not have the crew report, but this one does. A bit interesting as to why, I'm not sure. And then electric charge of 800 and 120 mono propellant. And yeah, you just need to slap on an engine or two onto this thing, and uh, maybe some little mono propellant thrusters, and you have a self-contained beautiful little ship here. And then finally, we have the, oh boy, let's see if I can pronounce this, Compact Lander, oh yeah, that makes sense, Type 2! And if we pop that on there, oh yeah, it's a big boy. And this one will only hold, though, three Kerbals. It just the size of these different things confuses me, but still, three Kerbals on the interior maximum. It is again unmanned for that capability, has a data transmitter, reaction wheel, SAS, again with the crew report, 700 electric charge, 1,920 monopropellant, and a capacity for 50 ore. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, very, very fun and very cool, and I mean, come on, who doesn't like having a giant monopropellant storage tank to go around with you. It's just wonderful. So these are the different command pods that we do have. Of them, the only that, uh, ones that have that placeholder interior are these bottom two, the C Bola and the C-22, as well as the CLS-1K. The top one here does not have a placeholder interior, uh, so that is unfortunate, but hopefully all of them will get proper interior views down the road that would be pretty cool. Now, as for other parts, well, we really don't have much here. In fact, we only have one part. If we just quickly scroll through all the other categories, you'll see we got nothing, 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 nothing again, nothing again, and then finally when we reach utility, we have the final part of the whole thing, which is the Cibola Landigerat. Oh, that, I, I really butchered that pronunciation. And this, of course, goes with the Cibola here, and it's meant to be a, uh, well, bottom-attached container, which will hold four Kerbals on inside of it, as well as have, of course, a data transmitter, 400 electric charge, 433.9 liquid fuel, 60 monopropellant, and 530.3 oxidizer. So this is sort of meant to be the, I guess, main housing area for your crew and this one to be the, uh, I guess, just command pod. And of course, you can use the two in conjunction to make a pretty nice little lander. And well, that's all the parts for this particular pack. Not a whole lot, but I think a good selection of a variety of different command pods that would be great for a good variety of different uses. So let's go and take a look at a couple of ships that I did make to give you a bit of an idea of what, of course, you could make. And we'll head to the tracking station here and first go to... Uh, this little Cibola lander that I put onto the fun new uh, launch pad that we get in the newest version of the game, which I like. I like that you can actually switch between two different launch locations now. That is a good addition into the game. And there we go, our wonderful Cibola lander in what I guess would be its all of its glory. <laughs> With our four Kerbals, as you can see again, very tightly in here, in a uh, magical command pod interior that is just, you know, invisible. <laughs> if we actually exit out and do the uh, interior overlay here, you can see how they are all compacted together in there lying down. And then of course the other interior down here with the four Kerbals, again with it sadly just kind of being an invisible interior, but nonetheless good for a placeholder for the time being. Again, I do hope that we get some proper interiors down the road, but yeah, a, uh, an idea of what you can make with the Cibola here and make yourself a fun, nice little lander. And let's head back to the tracking station and go to a bit more complicated of a vessel that I made earlier, the Lem ship. And uh, this one has a few more of the parts, and I used it to kind of make what 
you could possibly design as an interplanetary exploration ship with this. We have the Compact Lander Type 2 as sort of the, I guess, main command section of the ship, and then a central core section with four different landers for you to play around with. We have two of the C-22s and then two of the CLS-1Ks, so that you can enjoy, you know, a multitude of landers. Endings, and uh, I, I really actually do like that idea. I always love doing that with my ships, having multiples of those things. And I think with these parts, they make for good additions to that. I really do like the C-22 lander, even though I think it's a bit big for only being able to hold two crew members. It's still a very nice command pod for a lander. And of course, this wonderfully sci-fi looking thing here is just Cool. I love the idea of using that for like some sort of uh, personal ferry to and from the surface of Minmus. I think that'd make for a fun little adventure there. But yes, this is the CSA Conteres Lem mod, a nice little assortment of parts to give you a bit more you know, variety in your command pod. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I would definitely recommend you go and do, you can take a look at the link in the description as per usual. But that's going to be it for today, my friends. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course that you do come back for the next episode when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.